But guys, got a little bit of bacon grease, a little bit of cornmeal. Stick around and I'll show you how we're going to put them together. Welcome back guys. So we're going to do some cornbread today. Now, I haven't cooked cornbread quite as much as I've uh, baked, I say cooked, baked cornbread quite as much as I've baked biscuits. Um, but I did, you know, last couple years I have kind of dabbled in, in the cornbread. So what we're going to make here is, uh, I had tried three or four different things, some with some sugar and some with some self-rising flour, uh, different ones, and there was a consistency I was looking for, uh, a real thick, crusty crust and a, a good flavor to it. And so I finally came up with uh, tender bake. So this is tender bake, a yellowing cornmeal mix, and I believe it's self-rising too. Um, get old, you have to use these. Yep, yellow self-rising cornmeal mix. So this is what we came up with. And so for, and before I get going too far, I meant to mention this on the uh, cultivating video for the uh, horse-drawn plow. A couple, about a week or so, week and a half ago, maybe two weeks now, I got an email telling me that, and I had been kind of, they was telling me that I had a, a store that I could put on my YouTube channel for buying clothing. And I, I thought you had to be 10,000 subscribers, but hey, that's okay. Uh, they still turned it on. And I had been playing and toying with the ideal uh, of maybe trying to sell a few t-shirts and things like that. Uh, even, you know, for us as family people, you know, we like to have it too. So when they turned it on, I, I had already made up some few t-shirts in this spread shop thing. And so I turned it on and made some t-shirts and some cups available to purchase if any of you guys want to. And I mentioned, meant to say something about it on the last video. Now I know before a lot of you asked, there's no hats on there. You're right, there's not. Um, th their hats just wasn't, it just didn't come out. They didn't look right. Um, it just the hats really didn't have what I was looking for. So I didn't do the hats. So what, what I really had in mind guys is just kind of, there was really no commitment from me to do this. Uh, the spread shop takes all the responsibility, what they do, I'm sure, my guess is, they don't say this, but my guess would be, say, you know, one of you guys made a t-shirt order. They probably print it up, then ship it out. They don't have them printed up, ready to go. I'm sure they print them up and then ship them out. I ordered a few t-shirts and a cup, a couple of cups, just to see and make sure that they're, you know, pretty good quality. Um, and if this works out good and the channel continues to grow, uh, I own the rights to www.jtwest.com. So if it gets good or I, I'll, I've got a couple of people I can ask that, you know, do real good selling stuff. Um, and so I'll ask her about it. And if it does real good, I can, do something with jtwest.com. Of course, we would have hats and stuff then, but I was just trying to, you know, since there's no commitment on this spread shop, but I would keep the logo. Even if I did use jtwest.com, I would still keep my logo. Um, so, or make newer ones too. Let's do this. This is about the same recipe as my biscuits. I think if any of you guys watch the, I said recipe, the same amount. Any of you guys watch the biscuit recipe, it was two cups of flour, buttermilk, and all that. So this is gonna be two cups of tender bake. We're gonna to try to do this without making a mess. Let's see if we can do it in here. All right, that's one big cup. And we'll do another one here. This little sifter has got a line in it that makes a cup. Um, about right there. So that's another cup. So what we'll do is just, I kind of treat it just like I do my biscuits. 
I, I don't really have an amount of buttermilk that I put in it. I'm looking for consistency. And just like the biscuits where I was looking for it to be a little firm, I'm looking for this to be not so firm, not too watery, but pretty loose. I want it pretty loose. But, so the ingredients that I use is the buttermilk, the egg. It actually calls for a third cup of oil, vegetable oil in here. I use a third cup of bacon grease. So this bacon grease is from, and we need to melt it. We're going to use dimples again. Any of you guys watch the uh, video on the biscuits, you'll remember I told you about finding dimples up under a gutter and uh, redoing it. So what we got to do is we got to melt some oil in here and or melt some bacon grease. And I froze this guys after cooking breakfast one day. And now am I going to use all that? No, I'm going to use a if I can get a clean hand here. I'm gonna use a, a third cup of it and I'll show you what we're gonna do to the pan. We're gonna get this pan just about smoky hot before we put it in here. All right, well, I need my rag. Here it is. I don't wanna quite mix the ingredients up yet. I wanna kinda get this oil melted here. And once we get it melted, we'll, we'll mix everything together and we'll pop it in the oven. And I want to show you what we can this year. I hadn't had a chance to show you, you guys it in the can. And in a couple of my videos, I've always mentioned about for you guys that, you know, say you don't garden and you don't can stuff. And I think I've mentioned, you know, when you make that trip to the grocery store, get an extra can of Campbell's soup and get an extra can of this or that. And I'll show you what I have done over the last year and a half as far as putting up extra stuff other than just the green beans, the pickles, and the squash. All right, guys, we got our oil melted. So we're using, again, bacon grease. Now, if you want to know what bacon it was, Nieces makes a bacon as well as Nieces sausage. Man, I'm telling you, that is the absolute best bacon ever. So we're good. We got our quarter cup of oil. Recipe called for vegetable oil, but we use this bacon grease here. A lightly beaten egg, one egg. And of course, I think it said a cup and a third of milk. Now I use buttermilk. And so now what I'm gonna do now is get this thing mixed up to a consistency of not too runny but not too thick either. So like right now, I'm probably gonna add just a little more milk to it because I, I almost want it to pour out the bowl. Pancakes would probably be too thin. I don't know, pancake may be right. I'm trying to think of, a, of an example I could tell you guys that would be about right. At this point, if Sammy was in here, Sammy would rather me put a couple of teaspoons of sugar in it. He loves the sugar. So now what I'm gonna do, so we got just a little bit of that bacon grease still in this pan here. So we wanna get this thing, we actually wanna get it smoking. So while that's heating up, we'll take our time here. Kind of got to be careful too, because this stuff will thicken up on you if you let it set too long. All right, that's still just a little bit too thick, guys. I want to thin it out just a little bit more. How many of you guys out there used to watch Justin Wilson? I used to watch him all the time because Channel 4 in Chapel Hill was the only channel we could pick up in the 80s. We didn't have cable TV. But just Dan Wilson. I don't know the, the jokes and story he's used to tell. He used to tell some funny stories. All right, guys, see how this is. When you bend that bowl, it looks like it could just pour out real easy. See there? That's about where we want it right there. So if it don't thicken up too much, it shouldn't, she's got a little smoke on her now. 
Matter of fact, let's turn the exhaust fan on on low. We'll see it bubbling in there. It's starting to get hot. So we'll get her good and hot and get her good and smoking. Don't want to start a fire now. Flash point on bacon grease is pretty low. That ought to be good. All right, y'all hear it sizzling? And the reason why I want it not too thick and not too thin, see how it's running out to the edges? So it's running out to the edges. And we can cut that burner off and we're gonna take her just like she is. We're gonna pop her in here. Somebody made a pizza. I think the boys, somebody never, one of the boys or somebody in this house never puts uh, anything under their pizza. All right, let's see, I wanted to show you one other thing. If y'all like this video, we'll take this side meat here and Lino said it was her on the pizza smoke. She didn't put nothing on the rack. Um, we'll take this side meat and make the best BLT ever. And we'll have to do this. We'll have to take the Coleman, one of the Coleman stoves that I rebuilt, and take it outside to cook it because it has a smoking point of 25 degrees. <laughs> it's, it's higher than that, but it seems like if you're much higher than 25 degrees, it's smoking. But it's, I guess it'd be like old timey bacon. It's called a uh, Foothills. And one of the local stores carry it. Foothills sugar cured country ham side meat sliced pork. Man, it is so good. So we'll make a BLT on the next video with, with some of that. While this is cooking, come on over and I'll show you what I can this year. So this year, oh, if I can get down this far, these are the green beans. There's some stevia. We got green beans here. We did some squash right here. Uh, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, thirty, about fourteen squash. There's about a hundred and ten of the green beans in here. Um, and they all did great. They look good. Snapped up good and got twenty-two on them and that's some of those uh, lids that I had got from Amazon that yes I was tightening them too tight. I know I was. Well, I figured it out pretty quick anyway. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. About, we got about 18 quarts of corn, but of course, um, I give some to my sister in law when she came down. But man, we had one that didn't seal off, and guys, Lord of mercy, I'm telling you, it was still pretty warm coming out of the canner, and I put a little butter and a little salt on it. Oh my goodness. I could have ate the whole jar, to be honest with you. But, so that was probably, this was not 100%. So this was actually some of the mystery corn. Went to church and mowed the yard that morning. And uh, got back here about 10. And I just bypassed the house and went straight to the corn patch. And Will come up there and I, he asked me, was I going to film? And I said, oh, I, we just, we need to get it pulled. Um, and you, you guys had already seen a video this year with us doing corn, so I didn't want to put you through it again, but this was some of the mystery corn. It did pretty good. Um, Lino did a couple of quarts. She did about 10 quarts, and this is some of the Silver Queen here. She did about 10 of the Silver Queen just for soups. Uh, I think I counted up about 50 of the tomatoes. I made her do one in this little thing here. This is one of my favorite jars. It's been, I've had it for years and years and years. It's just a jelly jar, but it's a tall jelly jar. Um, so I, I made her do me one in there. Let's see, what else did we do? We did these, are some purple hulled peas that were done about five years ago. And I still like to have some every now and then. We did some pickles. So we did our uh, bread and butter with the uh, Mrs. Wages recipe, and I'll show you that. And we did a 
dill pickle, same, Mrs. Wage West P. And that was good. Um, and hey, there's proof that I did plant sweet potatoes one year. Actually, I used to plant them every year. We're going to plant some next year. I hadn't said nothing about it, I don't think. Um, but we're going to we're going to fix up the Holland transplanter and we'll plant some sweet potatoes next year. What I want to show you in here, a couple of things I was doing. Uh, and we'll come around these buckets here. Guys, I wouldn't tell you to do something that I don't do myself. And that's the canned goods. And I've just been picking up a couple of these every time we go grocery shopping. And I mean, they keep for a long, long time. And just think, you know, if Will had a can, I had a can, Lino had a can. I mean, it's got vegetables and everything. I, I can't think of a another good food uh, to have other than, you know, some canned stuff like that. And to be quite honest with you, the reason why I say this, it makes it affordable. And what I mean by affordable, because you're just getting, you're getting, you know, three dollars per trip to the grocery store. Maybe, maybe you splurge a little bit and get four cans, and you know you're spending six bucks, versus you know the stuff that you see. And you know, I wish I could just call up some of those uh, Mountain House or those people that do that food storage and say, yeah, send me enough for four people and for a year. I mean, you know, it's probably eight thousand dollar bill. I can't do that. So we have to take little bites at a time and this is what I came up with. So this um cup you know that coupled with my green beans and stuff and my canning abilities and in these buckets here I I did splurge on this. Sugar. Just plain simple sugar. Keep for a long time. Uh, these are food grade buckets and somebody, we ain't gonna say who, Lino, stole some sugar out of here yesterday. My plan is is to get these three buckets full. I'm not, guys, honestly, I'm not trying to put up enough food to last me five years, ten years, none of that. I just want enough that it get us a good six to eight months down the road. Um, and whatever works out by the end works out. I, I, I just don't think you, you know, between, you know, hopefully being able to plant something and go from there. And there's some other things in there. There's a lot of salt and some uh, oatmeal and some extra Tylenols and antacids and stuff like that. So we'll get back to the cornbread here in a minute. Let's check it real quick, Will. We'll take a little sneak peek. Oh yeah, she's coming along. Hang in there, we'll be back in a minute. We'll check it, cut it, see if it falls out the pan, and taste it. All right, we're just about ready. I think I failed to mention that it's 400 degrees what I put the oven on. Uh, again, just like my recipes, kind of touchy and feel and look, and it's kind of a look I'm going for on the cornbread when it starts darkening up to a certain place is, is when I pull it out. Um, we're going to the mountains, uh, hopefully tomorrow, and thought I'd take you guys along for that. Um, I'm not a how-to set up your RV or anything, just, just maybe a little nugget of something every day uh, of the mountains, and maybe you guys enjoy that, you know, maybe a little bit of cooking on the Blackstone, which I gotta get that thing back in shape. The Blackstone has been sticking real bad lately, so I've, I've tried to heat it up and with some oil in it and retreat the uh, cooking surface but it was at the beach and the wind was blowing pretty hard so it really couldn't get the fire as hot as it probably needed to be um, and I got I don't know if I've mentioned it we're going to put corn back over to barn again and I need to go ahead and chisel plow it now get the grass dying try to get it broke up uh, and, and I'm not going to plow it yet I just want to chisel plow it and maybe cut it I'm not sure if we do we may cut it with the bog hair and the weights a lot of you newer subscribers haven't seen that so we'll probably try to do that let's look at the cornbread it's 
just about where I want it. I'd like to see that top just a little bit more. Let's get her out and see. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. You can cook it a little longer, guys, if you want to darken it up. But let's cut this oven off. But that, I think, will be just fine. You can see a little bit where that bacon grease kind of hit it on this edge here, and you can see that uh, sharp, uh, good cooked edge here. I think it would probably fall out the pan, but let's just kind of make sure. Um, we may just kind of stick this up under here and make sure she's good and loose. Oh, well, we'll get it up under there. Oh yeah, she's loose. So let's flip her out of here. Oh, look at that crust. No lie there. Nice, good crust on it. Pretty hot. <laughs> Lino makes fun of me because it's weird. I, I don't like hot showers at all. As a matter of fact, I like them about cold. But my hands, I can touch hot stuff and it doesn't really bother me. Uh, I don't touch it that long, but it doesn't bother me. I was looking for a good... Yeah, we'll try this knife here. Alright, let's slice into it here. Let's, maybe we can hear a crunch. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I heard a crunch. Oh, yeah, nice, good cornbread, good thick crust on it. So we'll take us a little bit there. I get my glasses on, guys. Perfect. Got a nice good crust on the bottom. Good fluffy center. Nice crust all the way around that edge. Just a perfect piece of cornbread. Matter of fact, we're going to let it cool a little bit because it is hot. And we're going to have us a little bit here in just a minute. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you.